It is the touch right here on Y254. Those have been the highlights of the national athletics trials that were happening at the Nyayo National Stadium. And 32 athletes have already been selected so far to represent Kenya at the World Championship. The other batch will be told after the uh, ADAC, the Anti-Doping Commission, has already given us a go-ahead to say that they are clean to go and compete in September 27th in Doha, Qatar. But for now, it's all about us discussing the state of rugby in Kenya and I'm joined by the chairman of the Kenya Rugby Union, Mr. Odwar Gangla, here in studio with us today. Mr. Odwar, welcome to, K to Y254. Sorry, I'm used to KBC Channel 1, but it is Y254 today. How have you been? I've uh, been very well and thank you for inviting me to the show. It's always a pleasure to be here chatting with you about what's happening in the rugby field. Yeah. yeah. Big news that has been happening all the way, but we've got to start off with the, the Sevens circuit that has just come to an end last week in Mombasa with the Driftwood Sevens and the Kenya Commercial Bank KCB RFC taking the main title. How was it so far? What is the update from the circuit? Uh, first of all, I want to obviously congratulate KCB Rugby yeah. for winning the, the men's circuit. And also, we also had the women's circuit, yes. which was won by Impala. Uh -huh. And uh, I think if you look at the, the men's circuit in particular, it was a very competitive tournament. Yeah. We've seen a lot of uh, young players come through mm -hmm. the ranks. Yeah. But also we've seen the more experienced players who have been playing in the circuit for many years also put up their hand and yeah. uh, give a very good account of themselves. Uh, the coaches have been working very hard. I mean, if you just go at the tents, you just find everyone with a laptop yes. analyzing game from game, strategizing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you see that the, the quality of the games have gone up. Yeah. Uh, if you look at also because of the investment by Stanbic Bank yes. as the, the lead sponsor, there's a lot of improvement in terms of the look and feel. Mm -hmm. If even you just look at something like the presentation ceremony, yes. it's now similar to what happens in the World Series, yeah. the way we've organized it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it just looks like a, a really good event to, to be to and to attend. Yeah. They've been great after parties, and you know, rugby goes with it's uh, a festival. With, it's a festival. <laughs> yes. And uh, people have, have all enjoyed themselves across the country. Mammoth crowds. Yeah. I'm told in some of the venues you've been having up to six thousand people coming coming yes. through the gates. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been a it's been a huge success. Yeah. Which one was your best leg of the circuit? Well, must be driftwood. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> must be driftwood. Yeah. I think the 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 climax of everything is is a uh, solo is uh, something to watch. Yeah. Uh, Dala was also was also uh -huh. very good. I think yeah. Dala is, is quite popular. Yes. And uh, Christie's this year also did very well. Uh -huh. I think the Nairobi crowds were a bit starved of rugby, so yeah. they came out in in large numbers and it was quite a successful tournament yeah. as well. Uh, of the in, in the game of rugby, which kind of players that really? had an impact on you more so the young players that you saw that these guys can actually get to the national team at one point in time well now you're putting me on the spot <laughs> <laughs> okay leave, leave that by yeah. so, some of the young players we impressed i saw I, the I kenyatta so. university black blood yeah. the dreadlock radessa yeah. was one of the Aquesa. Uh, yeah, Aquesa, yeah. He's been playing well yeah one, one of the impactful season. players who came out uh, it's unfortunate he had some injuries so he didn't yeah. play all the legs i think he only played the last two uh -huh. but you saw his impact when he came on yes if you look at uh, Nakuru Monati Akwe, uh -huh. yes. uh, definitely a, a player to watch. He, yeah. he has a lot of positive attributes. Uh -huh. If you go to Mwamba, yeah. uh, Nzuga, the, yes. the winger, uh -huh. uh, Tony Omondi, the fly off. Yeah. If you go to KCB, uh, Okwach, uh -huh. uh, very interesting player. Yeah. Uh, Asati, yes. he was coming off the bench, but yes. also. He had a big impact on the games. Yeah. Onyala, outstanding. Yeah. He just showed what one year being in the circuit yeah. can do for you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can go on. Look at Oilers. Uh -huh. Oilers has a, a relatively new team. It's not the same team that was playing two years ago yes. with the likes of Ombasa uh -huh. and uh, Ngethe. Uh -huh. So the young people, the young players have, have come through. Uh, and uh, they've, they've shown a lot. There's, there's a lot to, to build on from here. Yeah. And uh, really it's for KRU now to, to nurture these players to, to be able to compete at the world stage. Big one for us there from the seventh circuit. Now, 
In your follow-up from what we are discussing earlier and we talk of the how Stanbic Park has come to help in the sponsorship of the game and how it's going so far. Yesterday you also signed another deal with the, the EABL, the Kenya Brewers Limited with Tasca to come and sponsor at 115 million. So it's actually one of your campaign promises. You will try to bring back the sponsors on board. How is this sponsorship going to impact the game going forward? Uh, Thank you. I think the this new partnership with uh, Tosca is a watershed moment for the game. Uh, Tosca used to be a, a very big sponsor yeah. of Kenya rugby. Yes. They scaled back their investment a bit. Yeah. Uh, and so this time, while well, they never really left, I think this is the time now they've come in with a big, big investment. Yeah. If you look, the investment is being split into call it four parts. Uh -huh. So there is uh, the 37.5 million which is coming to Kenya Rugby Union, uh -huh. uh, which will go 20 million into Safari Sevens. Yes. Uh, 10 million, we will put uh, Tasca on the Kenya Sevens shirt. Uh -huh. Then there is uh, 2.5 million, they'll also go on the Kenya Lionesses shirt. Uh -huh. Sorry, I meant shirt. The, not the sh it's a the short sponsor. They're, they're a short sponsor. Yes. So we'll also put them on the Lionesses shirt. You know the Lionesses have few assignments yes. internationally, so the sponsorship amounts can't be the same. And then uh, also uh, there'll be uh, around the test matches. You know, yes. when like Zimbabwe, when they come here, we have to host them. We also have to look after our team. Yes. So there's money for hosting the internationals going into next year as well. So that's one part. Now, if you look at the seventh circuit, uh, they've worked with uh, the host clubs. So, and uh, each host club did receive some some cash money in terms yeah. of to go into the organization. But also all these events have been sponsored by Tasca, the after yeah. parties. Uh -huh. So they've paid for the setup. You've yeah. seen the setup has been very yes. good. Uh -huh. The entertainment, we've had very good artists, yeah. uh, predominantly local, yeah. coming and entertaining the fans. Uh -huh. And uh, just that whole look and feel, yeah. they've also been investing in the media. So they, yes. every tournament has been advertised. Yeah. And you see, my estimate, roughly at least four million, four to five million going per club yeah. in the seventh circuit. Yeah. So that is part of the reason why we've seen very big numbers coming through. Yeah. For Safari Sevens, they're obviously going to ha going to have a very going to take it a notch higher. Yeah. From what we've seen in the circuit, yes. because now we are going to an international level. Yeah. And uh, I think at the right time you'll see us rolling out the build-up campaign going into Safari Sevens, which yes. will be quite a big campaign. We're going to have the formal launch uh, next week. Yeah. And at that point we'll be able to discuss everything else. Yeah. The other thing which is very significant for Tasca yeah. is. Uh, there's about uh, some money which has been earmarked for universities. Uh -huh. The universities uh, league. The now. universities league. Yes. And uh, they are working with uh, the the KUSA Kenya University Sports Association. Yes. Around this, uh, so that uh, they'll also support support the universities rugby. Yeah. If you see universities rugby is quite big. Yes. But it has never really been uh, commercialized properly. Yes. And so Tusk have seen uh, that 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 is one area which they could also come in. Yeah. And you see all these players. It's part of the pathway of getting to the national team. From actually uh, high school, uh, university, university yeah. to the national La circuit. Last year yeah. we had uh, Shadon Munoko from In Machine. He was yeah. the captain. Mm -hmm. And uh, he played right up to Kenya Sevens. He played in Vancouver yes. and other tournaments. And uh, it just shows you that we cannot ignore universities. Yeah. We had at least two players from Black Blood, uh, Wahinya. And uh, and uh, Levi Amonga, who has been on the fringes, yes. is now going to KCB. I remember Wandeto, Wande Mark Wandeto. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mark, yeah. So, yeah. so there are a lot of university players as well. So we want yeah. to widen that net mm -hmm. and help uh, have a very competitive universities league. Is that also your angle for development? Because university development is one of the key factors when it comes to rugby development in any country. It is a very critical part of our strategy yeah. for development because people go to university from college between age 19 and maybe about yes. 24, 25, yeah. and uh, they must play yes. and, and continue playing and play well and be competitive. Yeah. Uh, there's a time uh, in Min Machine were the, the champions of Kenya. Yes, uh, and back uh, in the 90s, I in think. The, in the 90s, I <laughs> yeah. mean, they were, they were dominant, and they produced a lot of national team players, including yes. our vice chairman, Thomas Opio, and, uh -huh. and many others. Yeah. Uh, even Hilary Teller came uh -huh. through the, the main machine system. So yeah. we must continue to invest in the university. They've yeah. been somewhat... Uh, 
because of the the funding challenges, especially in the public institutions, yes. at times they have to compromise on the investment in sport, yeah. which is hurting. Yeah. And if you look at the game is now headed semi-professional, yeah. the clubs are getting a lot more investment. And yeah. so this will go in terms of boosting the universities, mm -hmm. in terms of being able to remain very competitive. A big one for us there. Mr. Chairman, before we le leave the question of sponsorship, what other options are you exploring on sponsorship? Because I, I understand Bitco is your short sponsor on the park. We have got also Tasker coming in as a short sponsor. What other options are you exploring so far? Okay. Uh, if you look at uh, our flagship product, which is the Kenya Shuja, at the moment, really, uh, Bitco is at the back of the shirt. Yes. And now we've gotten a, a, a short sponsor. Yes. Uh, we still have quite a number of slots mm -hmm. on the on the playing kit. Yeah. Uh, the most prime being the the front of shirt of, sh of shirt sponsor. Yes. Uh, the shorts you can actually have two sponsors. Mm -hmm. It's it's allowable. Yeah. And uh, we are we're looking. We're actually in discussions with other parties as well. Mm -hmm. And at the right time, we'll be able to to announce and unveil once we conclude the discussions. Yeah. And uh, also we've considered uh, still not pretty common but if you look at other international leagues yeah uh some companies maybe may not be able to put in the 10 or 20 million to get onto the shot mm -hmm. but they can decide to maybe sponsor a particular player or a particular shot number yeah so in europe it's very common mm -hmm. below the number of the of the team at the back of the shot yes they have a different sponsor for each player so you can then use that to even augment uh, what we pay the players and that player can also become an ambassador of, of that particular uh, sponsor. sponsor. So it's still very early stage, but it's something which I'd like to see mm -hmm. where individual players, imagine if Onyala had a sponsor as well, and Olindi had a sponsor, and yeah. Tabu had a sponsor, mm -hmm. it would make a big impact for them as well mm -hmm. in terms of getting ready, uh, I mean, building on their professional, yeah. whatever. Because there's a limit to what can you can obviously afford to pay you. So yeah. we have to be creative how we, we maximize these assets. We are still hanging out with the chairman of the Kenya Rugby Union here in Y254, the touchline, and we are discussing all matters rugby here on the set today. A big game coming our way next weekend, uh, the Nakuru Athletic Club, the Victoria Cup, Kenya versus Zimbabwe. How are our preparations so far? Yeah, preparations are going on. Uh, the team has been training. Uh, we, we came back to camp, uh, to the training camp last week, yes. uh, putting together the pieces. I think it will be a blend of uh, still using some of the, the young players who've come through the, the Chipu system yeah. and uh, blending them with some of the more experienced players. A test match is a test match. Yeah. It will be exciting. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Nakuru crowds uh, will come yes. out in large numbers. Uh -huh. Again, we promise that we will uh, take this game to the people. That's, uh, that was actually <laughs> going to be my next question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Nakuru, yeah. Everyone loves going to Nakuru. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's right in the middle of the, the rugby playing hat. Yeah. So think mm -hmm. of people from Eldoret, Kitale, Western Kisi, Kenya, uh, yeah. people from Nairobi. Nairobi. It's three yeah. hours drive from every except Mombasa. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so we are quite excited about being able to partner with the uh, Nakuru Athletic Club. Yes. Uh, Chairman Mwangi Mushemi and his team have been working very hard. Yeah. to ensure this comes to fruition and uh, we'll continue with this gospel uh, of uh, let's take the the simbas around next year we want to have a test match in mombasa uh -huh. we we're discussing this last week with the the governor's team to yes. see how how the mombasa county can come on board yeah we really want a test in eastern province yeah whether it's meru or uh -huh. machakos yes we hope one of them we can we can work and uh, Nairobi, yeah. uh, we look again at the Rift Valley, mm -hmm. maybe Nakuru again, if not, maybe Eldoret. Yeah. We, all I'm saying, we are open-minded. Yeah. We have not closed the door on anyone. Yeah. Kisumu, Kakamega, where will Elgon Cup be? Do we go back yeah. to Kisumu again? Mm -hmm. Do we go to Kakamega? Because also Kakamega is very keen. Home ground for rugby uh, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. Uh, if you look, Kisi has also <laughs> developed very good infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, Kisi Stadium was redone uh -huh. and uh, it can host a test match. Uh -huh. So we are, we are open. Yeah, mm -hmm. this game is for all Kenyans. It's not for particular. We, yeah. we have discussed more on the Simbas and the Sevens team and also going forward. Also, the Olympic qualifiers for the ladies are coming around the corner. Our preparations on that front? Yes, we, we continue to, to prepare for the 
both the Olympics uh, qualification for the women. Yeah. Uh, we are playing in Tunisia the weekend before Safari Sevens. I think it's 12th October. Yeah. Uh, Springboks are also training for that, so uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, obviously been working with the government in terms of our funding applications. Yes, we still haven't received the money from government. So it's mm -hmm. a bit frustrating at times. Yeah, because you you want to be able to give the the team the best possible chance, mm -hmm. and it's something which we'd very much like to see come through. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, the team is psyched up in the, in the circumstances and I'm confident they'll be able to do a good job for the Kenya as they always do. Now the big question is actually now all over the world, the Rugby World Cup is here on our side. Kenya actually we did not make it to the world, Rugby World Cup but how do you see the World Cup coming around? Which team will you be rooting for? Is it Africa or are you going outside? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I happen to be an all-black supporter. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've, I've always loved the way they, they play the game, the, yeah. the approach to the game. Uh, in the last two World Cups, they've been out and out favorites, not this yeah. time. Mm -hmm. I think South Africa are very strong. Yeah. And uh, if you look at also a team like England, have been building nicely. Yeah. They have a very strong team. Right mm -hmm. from the time the, the likes of uh, Owen Farrell were in under 20, yes. they've been very, very competitive. And now they are, they are reaching the peak. Yeah. So I think uh, between uh, England, New Zealand, yeah. South Africa, and uh, England, New Zealand, South Africa, mm -hmm. to my mind, top three. I think Wales and Ireland are also mm -hmm. good, but... I'm not sure they're as good as those first three. Yeah. And then never write off Australia. Australia can play <laughs> yes. poorly for four years. Yeah. But when they get into the World Cup, they get into another zone. Yes. And we just saw the other day they, they hammered the All Blacks, mm -hmm. which uh, doesn't happen too often. Yeah. So, yeah, there are six good teams with a, with a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, the other guys who I'll be looking to see how they perform is Fiji. Because uh -huh. yes. Fiji have uh, developed their rugby. A lot of their players, if you look at how they use their sevens team, yeah. uh, they use their sevens team as a pathway to take their players into professional rugby. Uh -huh. So yes. the estimate is there are about four to 500 Fijians playing rugby in Europe. Yes. Then now, and many of them are playing for top clubs, whether yeah. it's in England, mm -hmm. in the top 14, there are quite a number yeah. in the best clubs. Yeah. And now it's a question of in the run-up to this World Cup, how will they come together? Yeah. It's unfortunate they don't get to play as many internationals as yeah. the other nations. I think if they were playing 11, 12 test matches a year, yeah. it, they'd be competitive. So don't try to Fiji. They yeah. had a very tricky pool. Wales, Australia, Fiji. I think yeah. that's the pool that excites me the most because yeah. I think Fiji will come out with something special. Uh -huh. So thanks a lot. Mr. Chairman, for coming here on Y254, the touchline. Your final word on matters rugby and going forward, what we can be expecting for the Safari 7s? Uh, rugby is in a good space now. We've gotten very strong endorsement and support from all the stakeholders, be the clubs, be it government, uh, be it uh, commercial sponsors. And uh, I, I just sense a good vibe about where the game yes. is going. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to a very competitive Safari 7s this year. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, as we go forward, uh, to just have a united, cohesive game, which yeah. everyone is proud about. We want to make Kenyans proud about rugby yeah. and take it back to where we were a couple of years ago. Yeah. And hopefully have a, a very competitive uh, World Series. Yeah. I'm also keen to see us qualify for the Olympics, both <laughs> men and women. Yeah. And finally, to get the women into the the seventh circuit yes. in the in the in the HSBC. Mm -hmm. They now have eight tournaments, which yeah. is, is a lot. Yeah. And that will help us really professionalize the women game. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the Reaper Church yeah. for the women. It hasn't yeah. been announced but yes. uh, I think the the bigger girls who play in the tight five are back in the gym mm -hmm. getting ready to for the Reaper Church and we see how it goes from there. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, too. We really appreciate you coming on board to tell us everything that has been happening in the world of rugby. As Thank the you. season comes to an end and as it picks up, okay. because I know many things are on your way. Thanks that has been the touchline here on Y254. Today we had a bit of a shift on our running order and everything that we do here on the touchline. 
But we have come to the end of the show. Enjoy your afternoon. I'm Robert Osoro. Maxwell Wasika will be live from the Davis Cup in Nairobi. Jim Kana to tell us in the, at Nairobi Club actually to tell us and give us an update of the Davis Cup that is happening there. From everybody on Y254, good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast. <laughs>